excited to have this next person here. He's a friend. Um, some of you may know I'm friends with Amit Shafir. He was here on on Tuesday, and um, I heard about uh, Liam's uh, uh, project. Uh, you did that when you were 16. Uh, uh, yeah, I did. And now you're 17? Uh, nope, not yet. You're still 16? <laughs> All right, so right, give it up. He's 16 years old. <laughs> All right, this is here. You're going to be talking about how you made school what happened? Yep. So just to, to so, so that we're not, everyone's not of a certain age, here you go. All right, so I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for the opportunity to be part of such a great event. As a 16-year-old, still very, very new to all of this, it's so great and exciting to hear all the different views and opinions about where people think the world's headed. Now, I'm here to share some of my own thoughts and thinking about the opportunities in the bot space, something that I'm really passionate about. But first though, let me give you some background about how I even got here in the first place. Thank you so much. With that, let's get started. I'm Liam McKinley, and I'm a junior at the Potomac School in McLean, Virginia. And I think all kids my age live a very technology-enabled existence. We've never known a world without smartphones, streaming audio and video, and drones. We're a mobile generation that cares much more about personalized media consumption than the 60-inch TV on the wall. I've read studies where there are claims that we spend nine hours a day consuming media on our phones. I really hope that number has been exaggerated a bit, but I do see screen addiction as a social issue that's facing all of us. It's being able to observe the technology-related behaviors of my own friends and peers as they interact, entertain themselves, and engage in commerce. It's had profound impact in shaping my own thoughts on technology and its potential. Personally, I've always had a love of technology, starting with robotics uh, very early on, and then recently, later on, moving into computer science. Last summer, I decided that I wanted to learn a new technology and talked to a family friend and successful entrepreneur about his own conversational commerce startup he was launching. I also saw my own family's great experience with Alexa. I think we're up to four or five Echo devices in the home at that point. I decided at that point that I was gonna dive into the whole conversational commerce space. That's what led me to create Schoolbot, which uh, is a conversational front end to Google Classroom, which I'll demo to you in a little bit. I'm excited to be working on something that I believe is one of those great transformational technologies like apps were when Apple first launched the App Store back in 2008. It's conversational commerce using natural language either typed or spoken to interface with technology. Now, I'm sure everyone in the room has their own experiences and opinions about the state of conversational technology. I was in the car with my dad the other week and as he's always trying to impose his favorite music on me, he activated Siri and asked for the song Bad to the Bone by George Thorogood. The next thing we knew, we were listening to a speech by Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. And it was really compelling, but not the way my dad thought. Uh, even though there's still lots of work ahead of us to get things right, there's, uh, for every one of those admittedly funky and sometimes frustrating events, there are a hundred other great experiences that demonstrate the power and potential of conversational technology, like the great work you've heard about at the conference this week. Now, if you read industry articles around some of the opportunities in the bot space, the four opportunities that get the most focus and where you've seen the most money being invested recently are in improving customer service, delivering value to the mobile consumer, personal finance, and managing the home experience. Each one of these areas highlights unique attributes that bots bring to consumers, and the rate of adoption in each of these areas is incredibly high. The whole B2C-focused bot space is exploding. Conversational interfaces are getting better and better. We've made tons of progress from the first launch of the Siri app back in 2009 to some next-generation services like Amazon Alexa. All the innovation here is also changing our own expectations of service as well. A recent study showed that 90% of millennials would rather deal with a bot than a human for customer service. But, but you, you are Gen Z. I know, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Only by a little bit. With all the innovation going on here, there are still a number of huge sectors where we've seen much less innovation. Let's take a look at one of those sectors. Education. To fully understand the opportunity here, it's important to realize that there are three things converging. First, 
Mobile is helping to bridge the digital divide that exists between households. Second, learning management systems like Google Classroom are gaining broad acceptance in schools. And third, conversational interfaces are becoming better and are more accepted by consumers than ever before. The whole digital divide around internet connectivity has been breached, if in a somewhat imperfect manner. Almost 90% of kids now have daily access to a smartphone, and the cell phone bill has replaced other bills as one of the first bills to pay for low-income families. It's that important to them. On a global level, it's estimated that two-thirds of adults worldwide will own a smartphone in 2018. That's an amazingly powerful enabling platform that's already in the hands of most families around the world. Now, at the same time, learning management, the middle schools and high schools are embracing learning management system. Google Classroom is exploding in use, and over 70 million students use, it for Google, use Google Apps for education already. It's the way many schools and teachers now manage key parts of the classroom experience, such as grades, homework, and communication with students. Conversational interfaces are also getting smarter, easier to build, and easier to distribute. Each major, fo uh, each major consumer focused technology giant has their own investment program in the conversational interface arena. That's important because they are creating the platforms that other firms can use to create next generation conversational experiences and then get them into the hands of consumers, leveraging the massive install base of smartphones, messaging systems, and home hubs that are already part of many consumers' day-to-day -day experiences. My own first step into conversational technology is school bud. Let me tell you how that came to be. As I mentioned, last summer, I decided I was gonna jump into the whole conversational commerce space. I looked at some of my own experiences as a student and saw an opportunity to potentially create a conversational front end for Google Classroom. I've been using Google Classroom since its launch, as my school was very quick to embrace it. It was really a useful tool, but it had a more traditional web front end to it. I decided to try to create a bot that would be an easy to use conversational interface for things that matter to me, homework, grades, and communication with my fellow classmates and teachers. At the same time, VentureBeat decided to launch the first international botathon, inviting people from around the world to compete. With my dad's encouragement, we entered the contest as a way to have some fun and to motivate us to create the first alpha version of what I envisioned. There were over 250 people compete from around the world, competing from China, Europe, Israel, Australia, and of course, the Valley. I found out later that I was the only non-adult competing in the event. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> wow. It was a blast. We got a little no sleep over a four-day period, but at the end, we had what we thought was a compelling entry. I went through several rounds of judging and elimination, and at the end, we wound up winning the bot fund. Wow. <laughs> I learned a ton during it and also made some nice friends as part of the process. After the event, my dad and I had a long talk and decided to create a real business around SchoolBot. Now, working that in with school and sports hasn't been the easiest, but I'm happy to say that we now have a robust service that we're launching as a free offering to students on both Facebook Messenger and Kick, the messaging solution that's in use by 40% of the high schoolers in the US, including me. Here's a quick demo of it. SchoolBot starts out by being able to answer simple questions about the service. What it is, what it costs, who can use it, etc. The bot supports questions for a wide range of things related to homework, grades, and tests. It also makes communication to teachers and classmates really simple. Here you can see the classes I was signed up for. How about homework for them? Do I have any today? We look across all of your classes for you and tell you what's up. Wow. I can also look to see if I have any overdue assignments. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> 
students and teachers of Reeves. You can use their name or their role. In this case, my biology teacher. We also make communicating with your whole class simple by leveraging posting to the discussion thread that each class has. In addition, you can inquire if there are any new posts for your class since the last time you asked us. That's really useful because teachers use this feature extensively to communicate with their class. You can also look to see your overall average grade for a class. Or, if you want, you can drill down into all the grades you've got for your assignments and tests. You can also see if there are any upcoming tests or quizzes, either by asking SchoolBot or by getting the automatic 48-hour warnings we send out in advance. SchoolBot also serves as a great task-focused reminder system to let you easily manage things both inside and outside of school via a simple, intuitive interface. We've had great feedback so far. Kids really love it. Hopefully, uh, this gives you some idea of what these next generation mobile education services can accomplish. But done right, mobile friendly tools like Schoolbot are really compelling because they're simple to use, accessible wherever you are, don't require any specialized technology, and are able to add immediate value to students and their parents. Mobile has huge under leveraged potential in the education space. We just need to somehow strike a balance that allows the responsible use of smartphones both inside and outside the classroom. <clears throat> the impact of any technology is very dependent on speed of adoption. With the smartphone, we have a tool already in the hands of students that can serve as an incredible platform to deliver value today. We need more solutions that a school district can get behind and see progress in a single semester. The smartphone can serve as an incredible delivery mechanism for education tools that can have that kind of immediate impact. We also need to focus on tools that work well with the existing curriculums already in place in schools without requiring extensive changes to the teaching process. I like to call this an outside-in approach to education innovation. Let's deliver mobile tools that allow students to develop better learning and planning techniques and improve how they work in cooperation with other students and teachers to succeed. That's how you can deliver immediate impact and maybe why more complex, more expensive technology solutions aren't achieving all that they promised. I believe that simple, mobile-friendly tools like Schoolbot are an important step in the right direction, but only the first step. There's so much more we can do in this space. Let's just dream of a world where each student is partnered with their own mobile-friendly, intelligent bot that understands their individual learning style, has access to great content, and is able to act as their own, always available teacher's aid. We're not that far away from making it a reality. It just takes commitment. Now, one of the goals with Schoolbot is to make it accessible, is to make a real difference. And as part of that, we want Schoolbot accessible to the broadest range of students possible. My Aunt Sean is the supervisor in the Sacramento School District, and she always talks about the challenges that her students and their families face. That's one of the big reasons we decided to launch Schoolbot as a free offering. We will have a freemium model eventually, but we're focused on launching the free offering uh, later this school year, sometime uh, February-ish. Uh, beyond education opportunities, there are a few other important takeaways. First, there'll be a few power brokers in the bot space. They're the ones with logical platforms to leverage, like Facebook Messenger, Skype, and Amazon. Now, that said, there are other companies that also understand where things are headed and are looking for their own strategic conversational platforms, like General Motors. The good thing is, as a startup, is that if you get on these platforms, you don't have to fight the battle of getting a consumer to download and use your app. The challenge now is figuring out how to market your service in the very early stage bot marketplaces that exist. Second, voice interfaces are great, but cumbersome to navigate as you add more and more services to them. I'm not sure the how the experience scales since we add on lots of functionality. 
I'm also not sure how users will discover new capabilities easily. Maybe new hybrid devices like the Echo Show and the Echo Spot with their integrated displays will be an important part of the answer here. And third, creating bot or conversational interfaces is getting better and better. Uh, I use the Microsoft Bot Framework, which handles lots of the heavy lifting around natural language processing for us. It even has a fun, frequently asked question bot generator, which takes in traditional FAQ pages and creates a conversational interface with just a few clicks. It isn't perfect, but it's a great way of seeing where things are headed. I guess the single biggest takeaway I'd like to share is that this is still a market at an incredibly early stage. And I'd like to encourage more and more folk to dive in to help shape where this next generation of man-machine interaction will take us. Again, thank you for the opportunity to speak and for letting me be part of such a great event. Thank you. Wow. Still only 16. Uh, any questions? Out to the back. Congratulations. Your presentation was just superb. Thank you very much. Just want to say that uh, my son is a 10 year old and he's a quarter, and he would love to be your ambassador. So if you need anyone to start being your first ambassador of your company, just let me know. All right, I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Are we at Jonathan? Uh, yeah, you said that your father and you were considering turning this into a business. Uh, yes, we are. I get who the users are, but who are the customers? Uh, customers? Well, so far we're focused on making a uh, free, but we will have a freemium model where students can pay to get other features such as a more detailed reminder system and stuff like that. But for now we're just focused, we're, have, uh, we're in beta mode actually, so we're just taking that feedback, working in the changes, and then hopefully sometime around February we'll... Does the freemium let you integrate with Wolfram Alpha so you just tell it to do your homework for you? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. That would be great. Nice. It's the freemium. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Now, in reference to kind of your strategy going forward, are you going with like the, the Facebook take over the world and then figure out how to monetize, or are you guys kind of going with the like the movie you said you don't want to end the party early? Are you are you kind of taking the approach of taking over everything and then looking to monetize, or slowly try to like do things to so you don't get cursed? I'd say we're some taking the path kind of in the middle between those two options. So far, we're just focused on trying to add value to students not worrying so much about the grand scheme of things. But I guess as time goes on, we will start to worry about that and take that into account. But for now, we're just trying to focus on adding value. And the, all the way in the back. Are you uh, planning to kind of like integrate with a lot of the platform software that's out there, like Blackboard, like Google Classroom, that kind of software? Uh, yeah, so far we're just focused on Google Classroom, but we definitely have plans to expand to stuff like Moodle and Blackboard. Over there? Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going to volunteer to help you get ambassadors. We'll put it out to everyone who attended the conference. But please set up a page so people can sign up. Yeah, that would be much appreciated, and we'll definitely do that in the future. Uh, one more question or comment? Well, hey, you're 16. Congratulations. Do you want to say who your dad is, by the way? Uh, John McKinley, guy in the chair over there. <laughs>